I've been looking, I've been looking searching, trying to find the right way to walk. Stay, baby, find me, girl. Yeah. You can try me, I yeah. want to walk in your life. I've been looking, I've been looking, searching, trying to find the right way to walk. Is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy, my enemy, I think they trust I put all in thee. Believe you got the world in your hand. Bless me, Lord, I know I can stand. I also want to say to the people that are watching us live on the internet, good afternoon, and as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, uh, last week I was in Dallas, and they, uh, I can't say they are really growing because uh, the house was packed, but when I show up, people come from everywhere. If they can have that crowd every week, Dallas would really be off the chain. But we're going to get right to this lesson, sister and brother, because uh, this is one of the lessons that I put together because people are always saying that they'll save. And uh, you think that once you come to the Lord, you do something right for a minute, or either you confess his name, then you are saved. The Lord called me to put, this, put together this lesson, this title, Who Will Be Saved? They that abide it, that abide in God's love. Who will be saved? They that abide in God's love. Abide means stay, sister and brother. You can't have a, uh, a, a, a passing connection with God and move on and think that you are saved forever. It don't work like that. And we're going to read some things that people go to and try and establish certain uh, uh, facts that's concerned and save, sister and brother. And we're going to Romans, the 10th chapter. That's where we're going to start this at. Romans chapter 10. Because everybody wants the easy way out. The Lord's way is not hard, sisters and brothers, but you have to do something. You just can't just sit and, and use your mouth and get salvation and don't uh, practice your behavior. And it's easier, if it was this easy, then I'd have it made. I wouldn't even have to show up here. All I got to do is say I believe on Christ and I'm going to be at home. And I won't be getting upset about things like the telephone messing up. Romans 10 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, uh -huh. and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, that sounds good, but you have to have a little more added to that, sister and brother. Because a whole lot of people confess to the mouth the Lord Jesus. Even Jesus warned you in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew that many are going to come in, come in his name saying that he is Christ, but they shall deceive many. It's not talking about them. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A little more than that. Let's find out what it is. Go ahead and read. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? For, for first thing is, if you're going to call on him, you have to believe in him, sisters and brothers. And everybody uses the name, but they don't believe in him. And how, and how do I know that? I watch their behavior and listen to their conversation. But go ahead and read. And how shall they believe in him? Of whom they have not heard. And how shall they believe in him. In whom they have not heard. A lot of people. Said they believe in him. But they haven't heard of the Lord. Sisters and brothers. The reason I know. Is because Jesus said he was a God also. At a Sabbath day. 
This Jesus that we teach about is going to sit on David's throne. He said nothing about rapturing you off to heaven. But go ahead and read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And it is those that preach the gospel of peace is beautiful when they bring tithes of good things. But you ask the question then, how do I know then that my preacher is a preacher? How do I know that you are a preacher? Nobody can tell. Well, that would be presumptuous of you, sisters and brothers. Because you can't preach unless you are sent. And let's see what a preacher that is sent will say. Of what will he teach you? Let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Because you have a whole lot of men out there and women. Well, since the Lord, since I was called, since I was called. And you start asking questions, and then you will knew, know. Maybe they was called, but maybe they wasn't sent. Because, sisters and brothers, there are certain qualities of a preacher that must, that you must put forth. And we're going to find it out. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 9. Because the Lord always gives you a way to find out who is who in front of you. Verse 9, go ahead. And more, uh -huh. because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. That means you have to know something if you have a preacher, sisters and brothers. Because if you don't know anything, then who taught you? Go ahead and read. Yeah, he gave good heed uh -huh. and sought out and set in order many proverbs. He listened well and he really searched out many proverbs or either the word of God, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, uh -huh. and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. So if he's a preacher, he sought out to find out the real words of God, sisters and brothers, and that which was written, not he, oh, the Holy Ghost spoke to me in my mind, that which was written, even the words of truth. Because what are you going to preach if you don't read the book, sisters and brothers, nothing. Are you going to preach your own opinion? Go ahead and read. The words of the wise are as gold. The words of the wise are as gold. What does gold mean? That they drive you. They pushes you. They make you want to find out more. They are as gold. Go ahead and read. And as nails fastened by the masters of assembly. And you don't get out this rag tag. I mean, when this word is just like a master carpenter. You can tell he's a master carpenter because everything is in place, sisters and brothers. Yeah. All the planks and whatever he put together, everything fit. Everything is cut the way it's supposed to be cut. Same thing with the word of God. It's supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be something you can see. Finish that. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from how many shepherds? One shepherd. Most people don't pay attention. Everything that Jesus said, he said, I got it from my father. I got it from my father. He didn't go nowhere else. He didn't try to seek out a whole lot of different, and like, well, like we doing now, seeking out a whole lot of different books. Yeah. I hear brothers, you tell me one time, well, brother, there are many truths. There ain't but one truth. Anything beyond one is a lie. It's all that simple. So now how do you know that your preacher was sent from God? Because he taught you knowledge. And how can you know that you have some knowledge? It's when you go into this word and see that which you was taught is written. That's right. Because that's where you're supposed to get it from. Mm -hmm. Now let's go in the Jeremiah the third chapter. The Lord let it know, let you know the kind of preacher that he had and that he sent. Because you have too many preachers out here, sisters and brothers. And if you don't know, don't if you don't have a scale on which to weigh them or something to compare it to, you will never know who a real preacher sent by God is. Because the only one that can be, that can preach is the one that's sent, sister and brother. 
Anything else is Bible. It's all that simple. Jeremiah third chapter. And we're going to start at verse 14. This is the Lord telling Israel to turn. And both people think that he's talking about only in that time when the book was written. No, he's talking about our time. He's still telling you to turn, O black, backslide in Israel. Because we have slid back from the truth. Go ahead and read. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. For I am married unto you. Go ahead. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. Uh -huh. And I will bring you to Zion. He said, now I'm still going to bring you back. I'm married to you. Oh, oh Lord. Divorced Israel, sisters and brothers, but he's going to re remarry Israel. That's what the lesson is going to be about next week. But he said, but I'm going to take you one of a city, and I'm going to bring you back. Go ahead and read. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. Go ahead and read. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You've been in church. All your life, and you don't know that Christ didn't die on Good Friday and rise Easter Sunday morning? You've been in church all your life, and you didn't know that ain't no man been to heaven but the one that came down? You've been in Christ all your life, and you didn't know that Jesus told us four times that he ain't going to raise the dead until the last day. So who been preaching to you? Who been preaching to you? The evidence is in the pudding, sisters and brothers. So if you don't have no knowledge, then your preacher obviously wasn't sent by God. It's all that simple. Let's go into Romans the 10th chapter. Romans the 10th chapter. Because it is all about the word, sister and brother. That's what it's about. It's not rituals and not coming in and, and acting all out and getting all happy. It's good to be happy to hear the truth. But what happened is that people go to church and, know, and the last thing that's, that uh, uh, you will find is the truth. Ministers don't even read the word no more. They'll read a verse and they're going to give you a good conversation. Motivational speaker. Romans 10, let's start at verse 1. 10 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is uh -huh. that they might be saved. Go ahead. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. See, now, that is the problem right there. Much zeal for God, but no knowledge. So Israel have that. Go ahead and read. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness, Go ahead. have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now what is Paul talking about? Look, if you are not aware of God's righteousness, or not aware of what the Lord uh, deems as righteousness, then you're going to go and establish your own righteousness. You can't go to church and just stand there and look at the people. So how do you establish your own righteousness? Because you say, well, the law ain't no more. So if the law ain't no more, then you can't sin. And you got to come up with you another form of sin. Smoking and drinking. And dancing. Even some preachers, I guess his wife, uh, shop too long, going to shopping mall. So if you, if you done gotten rid of the law, you got to do something. I got to teach you something. I ain't going to teach you the law. So when you are not aware of God's righteousness, what do you do? You come up with your own form of righteousness and make it sound real godly. The Lord love everybody. The Lord don't love everybody, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. Four. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness uh -huh. to everyone that believeth. See, now, if you knew what Christ was, that he was a sin offering, then you would have known that when he died, he ended the animal sacrifice, not the commandment. But you know that. You know why? Because you have been taught knowledge. Are you running around with, see the Lord nail them old commandments to the wall, to the cross. You don't have to keep that old law no more. Then I say, okay then, I know what time you're going to work tonight. Soon as you get to your job, I'll be walking through your back door. Because I'm going to see if I can lay my hands on your wife. Oh, brother, that's adultery. No, that's the law. Law ain't no good until it, until it falls on you. You understand? 
There ain't no sin until I steal that hundred dollars laying on your table. Now you want to tell me thou shalt not sin. Well, that's the law. Thou shalt not steal. But that's what happens when you don't understand. Christ ended the law of animal sacrifice because he was the sin off. Go ahead and read. For Moses described of the righteousness which is of the law, uh -huh. that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Go ahead. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Uh -huh. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Uh -huh. That is to bring Christ down from above. Now, people have used this because they have no knowledge that said Paul is trying to replace what Moses said. He ain't replacing Moses. He quoted Moses. And Moses said, you know, that if you're going uh, uh, if, if to uh, uh, keep the law, you can acknowledge the law, then you're going to walk in it. Right. There ain't no other way. But he, I'm on, we're going to pay attention to what Paul said here. For Moses described the righteousness of the law, that, ma that the man that which doeth them shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, speaking on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. We're going to see if Paul is trying to re erase Moses' right. Go ahead and read. Or who shall descend into the deep? Uh huh. That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Uh, who goes to descend into the deep uh, to bring up Christ out of the grave? Go ahead and read. But what saith it? Uh huh. The word is nigh thee. Go ahead. Even in thy mouth. Uh huh. And in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, let's see if Paul preached anything different from Moses, sisters and brothers. Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. See, we don't preach that old law. You know, we preach faith. You don't even know what faith is. The average person don't know. They think faith is an individual. Since faith came, I like to see them Gentile preachers say it all the time. Since faith came, I'm looking at the door. Why are you looking at the door? I'm waiting to see if you're going to come in the door. Faith is merely belief, sisters and brothers. Until you start to believe God, you're going to keep sinning against God, and the wages of sin is death. And being that uh, uh, God don't want to kill his whole creation, he replaced man with animal. That's why the animal sacrifice was brought on board, because the wages of sin is death. And being that man couldn't stop sinning. A law had to be added. The law of animal sacrifice. But let's start at Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. When all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. Go ahead. Which I have set before thee. Now see the Lord in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. The Lord told Israel, if you do everything I tell you to do and watch my, walk in my laws and statutes. I'm going to make you the top people on the earth. You're going to be the financiers of the whole planet. And a whole lot of other good stuff. But if you don't keep my commandments, you're going to be cursed. Yeah. You're going to be the last people on the planet. All the other people that's among you are going to come up very high. You're going to come down very low. They're going to loan to you. You're not going to loan to anybody. And I'm going to have you go into captivity again by ships where you're going to be sold as male and female slaves. So he said, after all this has come up on you, because it's the curses, sisters and brothers, what's going to happen? Go ahead and read. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. That means you fell under the curse, didn't you? Yeah. And you shall call them to mind among all of the nations. Go ahead and read. Whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. Uh-huh. And thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. And you're going to turn to the Lord God and obey his voice, according to the, all the things that I command you this day. What? The day of Moses. Because the Lord said, I'm God and I change not. Yeah. Ain't nothing new going to pop up in the book. Go ahead and read. Thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Go ahead. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Then he's going to reverse your captivity. And have compassion upon uh -huh. thee. Uh-huh. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. And we'll return and gather you. Not send another Moses, sister and brother. No. Not rapture you off the heaven. He will return and gather you from all the nations where he has driven you. 
That means that ain't nobody going back as a people until Jesus returns. Go ahead and read. Four. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven. Go ahead. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. So no matter where you are, the Lord's going to get you. He knows where every Israelite on the planet is. Go ahead and read. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Uh-huh. And thou shalt possess it. Go ahead. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy father. Now he's going to do us better than our father, sisters and brothers. When he returns, but something you still got to do. Go ahead, skip down to verse 8. Verse 8, and go ahead. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord. And you shall return and obey the voice of the Lord. And do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And do all of those same commandments which he commanded us in the days of Moses. Now look what he says here. Skip down to verse 11 and pay attention. Go ahead and read. For this commandment which I command thee, this day, uh -huh. it is not hidden from thee, Go ahead. neither is it afar off. Uh -huh. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. He said, now this commandment is not hid from you. This commandment I gave you today. You don't have to say who's going to go up to heaven and bring it down. No. Ain't this what Paul is saying? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Neither. Is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say? Uh-huh. Who shall go over the sea for us now, and bring it unto us? Now, Paul used the grave with Jesus, but he used the sea, didn't he? Yes, sir. Neither. See, Paul just put his little spin on it, but he quoted it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you have to say, who going to go over seas and bring it back? In other words, I don't have to go over to Jerusalem, learn uh, Hebrew. No. Why is that? Go ahead and read. That we may hear it and do it. Go ahead. But the word is very nigh unto thee. But the thy word. Mouth. But the word is very near unto you. Go ahead and read. In thy mouth. Uh huh. And in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Ain't this is what Paul said? Yes, sir. In the mind, in the mind, and in the heart that thou mayest do it. It's sitting right in your lap. What word? We are reading the words that Moses wrote. We are reading the word that Paul quoted. And it is still here. Because this word have a great significance. Keep reading. 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good uh -huh. and death and evil. Now Moses letting you know. So the Lord has set before you this day life and good and death and evil. This is not talking about just first and second death because you're going to die anyway now. Since Adam and Eve messed up in the Garden of Eden. So the real life he putting in front of you is eternal life, sisters and brothers. But when did he set before you? In the days of Moses, sisters and brothers. You didn't have to wait till Jesus come. It was already here. Let's see what he set before us. Go ahead and read. And then I command thee. Uh-huh. This day to love the Lord thy God. To walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. And his statutes and his judgment. Now that is what he set before us. Mm -hmm. He set before his commandment and his statutes and his judgment. So if you keep these commandments, then you will live. Yeah. But when did he do it? Not when Jesus came. Moses put it on the table. Go ahead and finish that. That thou mayest live and multiply. Uh-huh. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Now, he said us that even before we got to the promised land. He gave us this in the wilderness, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. He set before us life and death, good and evil. Skip down to verse 19. He wanted to tell you that I got witnesses to this. Go ahead and read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Uh huh. That I have set before you life and death. Go ahead. Blessing and cursing. Uh huh. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now he got heaven and earth to witness to what he set before us. I'll set before you life and death, good and evil. Mm -hmm. Choose life and live. And this is so simple what he said before, sisters and brothers, until but man have complicated it. What did he set before us? His commandments. Keep my commandments and you will live. But let's get some confirmation. Let's go into Matthew's the 19th chapter. Matthew's chapter 19. 
But man, it's complicated everything. Anytime you get somebody want to complicate something, they want to confuse you. But Paul speaks about the simplicity of Christ. It is so simple, don't nobody want to believe it. Nobody want to believe it. Let's read this simplicity. Matthews 19, and we're going to start at verse 16. Matthews 19 and verse 16. It is so simple until everybody thinks something wrong with it. Verse 16, go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now he want to know what he's going to have so he can get immortality. That's what he's saying? Yeah. Go ahead and read. And he said unto him, uh-huh. Why callest thou me good? Now that's why you need to pay attention to this. Why callest thou me good? Go ahead and read. There is none good but one. That is God. That's because Jesus was man then. He letting you know you ain't good until you God. That makes you perfect. Yeah. But he's going to answer this guy's question. What's the answer? Go ahead and read. But if thou will enter into life. But if you will enter into life. Keep the commandment. Keep the commandment. Is that anything different than what Paul, uh, Moses said before? No, sir. Same simple stuff. But we want to read, well, you know, the Lord told him to sell all this. Look, he had answered his question, but he wanted to show the Lord that he was righteous. So the Lord put something on. Okay, you rich man, sell everything you got and give it to the Pope. Then he walked away. Sometime when you get your answer, be satisfied with it. Like God is going to change his mind. If you will enter into his life, keep the commandment. That is too simple. Because why you're trying to get into eternal life? Because Adam and Eve took it from your sisters and brothers. They took it from you. And before Jesus came in the flesh, there was no hope of salvation. None, sisters and brothers. But Jesus came and restored it to you. There was no hope of it to immortality until Jesus came and restored it to you. This is what people don't understand. That's why people don't understand the importance of Jesus coming and being a sin offering. Because before he came and died, there was no hope. So if you're going to, like Paul said, you know, even the law ain't going to help you. No, if you don't get bailed out of the pit where there was no water, there was no hope. Let's go into Zechariah the ninth chapter. That's why I can't understand the Lord came and he died for your sin. And people go and sin, showing up, well, now ain't the law ain't no more now. So I guess I can sin until I get tired. No, you sin until God get tired. And when he get tired, he's going to give you a reprobate mind and fix you so you can't return so he can barbecue you forever. Mm. Had a person on telephone yesterday. He was talking all cocky until I put that lake of fire on it. <laughs> then, then all of a sudden, his whole tune changed. But I let you know, boy, this is a bad step out here. God is not playing. He will kill you. Zechariah chapter 9, Zechariah chapter 9, let's start at verse 9, Zechariah 9 and 9, read it. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, Uh huh. shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, go ahead, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, Uh huh. he is just and having salvation, go ahead, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the coat, the foal of an ass. Now, 21st chapter, St. Matthew will tell you that's Jesus. You can go and read that on your own if you don't know it already. Mm-hmm. But it's something he got to do, sisters and brothers. It tell you that he is going to take this world down and rule it. But before he do that, he have to get you out from under this death sentence. How is it that he going to do that? Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11, and go ahead. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, Uh I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. I have sent forth thy prisoners by the blood of thy covenant. I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein there is no water. If you're in a pit where there's no water, what's next for you? Death, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and finish that. Turn you. To the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. So he said, turn you to the stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Who is the stronghold? The Lord is the stronghold. Turn to him, ye prisoners of hope. Because 
That is when you're going to get hope. Once he died for your sins. Go ahead and read. Even today do I declare that I will render double uh -huh. to thee. He said, nah, he called you. You have to be a prisoner of hope, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. You got to hope. Because if you don't have no hope, sister and brother, you ain't going to do nothing about it. As long as you have hope of getting out, say like you in debt, you figure you got your plan to fix it. As long as you in hope that you got a plan, you will work toward fixing it, won't you? But the day that you lose hope, that's the day you lost. Let's go into Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. Because before you can get anything, you had to be restored, sisters and brothers. The Lord had to give you the hope that you need to finish this thing. Mm -hmm. If I had no hope, then I wouldn't be getting up every Sabbath. I wouldn't get up every morning and read this book. What for? I'm going to die anyway. It's just like somebody come to do a job. You're going to pay them before they finish the job up front? They might, well, I got the money. Now I don't have no incentive to work. Romans 8 and verse 24. Romans 8 and verse 24. Because if you don't have no hope, sisters and brothers, it is all over. Verse 24. Go ahead and read. For we are saved by hope. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen uh -huh. is not hope. Go ahead. For what a man seeth, what does he yet hope for? It's just like paying somebody for a job. If you got the reward, what is there to hope for? You got the money already. But you're saved by hope. Go ahead and read. But if we hope for that we see not. But if we hope for that that we don't see. Then do we with patience wait for it. Then you wait for it patiently, sisters and brothers. Because you have hope. Because without hope, you don't have nothing coming. But what is it that we are hoping for? Let's go into 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. People say, I got hope, but what are you hoping for? People when they say, well, I'm saved, what are you saved from? You have to have more than just the word. It don't stand alone by itself, sister and brother. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 6. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, and verse 6. Okay, go ahead. Therefore, let us not sleep uh -huh. as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Don't go to sleep on this word, sisters and brothers. Watch and be sober. Go ahead and read. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. Uh huh. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. That means that you are not paying no attention. Go ahead and read. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, uh -huh. putting on the breastplate of faith. Let us love. be sober, put it on the breastplate of faith. Faith and love, go ahead and read. And for an helmet. And for an helmet. The hope of salvation. The hope of salvation. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. We're hoping for salvation, sisters and brothers. And before Jesus died and rose from the dead, we had no hope. Mm -hmm. We was dead people walking. Well, let's get a little confirmation of that. Let's go into 1 Peter. The first chapter. Because we are all here. Because we are hoping that we will be saved. That's what salvation is about. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that we will get eternal life. That's why we're here. Everybody in the house. If you're not here for that, then you must have got the wrong address. First Peter. Chapter 1, start at verse 3. First Peter 1 and 3. Okay, go ahead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read. Which according to his abundant mercy uh -huh. have begotten us again into a lively hope. Have begotten us again into a lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. By the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Look, sisters and brothers, until Jesus rose from the dead and lived forever, there was no hope of any man to, can do that. Mm -hmm. That's when we was gotten to a lively hope. Because when Jesus come out of that grave, then everybody else is going to come out of that grave. We know that. And we're hoping for that. But go ahead and read. 
to an inheritance incorruptible uh -huh. and undefiled. Go ahead. And that fade of not away reserved in heaven for you. Uh huh. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Look, we are hoping for salvation to an inheritance incorruptible. We want to become God, sisters and brothers, which preserve in heaven for us. Yeah. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. So you got to have faith, sisters and brothers. You have to. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In other words, in the last days. It ain't, it's not time yet. But you have to be kept through faith. Whose faith? God's faith or your faith? Your faith. Let's get an example, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Because we pay no attention, sisters and brothers. Everybody want the Holy Ghost to do it all. Want God to do it all. We ain't got to do nothing. All we got to do is believe. Believe in what? You go to church on the wrong day. So whatever you believe in, you didn't get it from out the Bible. You understand? Luke chapter 22. And we're going to start at verse 31. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And this really should get your attention here. Verse 31, go ahead. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, uh -huh. behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now this is Peter, the man that the Lord gave the keys of the kingdom to. He said, Satan would love to have you. That he might sift you like wheat. But I told him, hey, this is my man, Satan. You can't have him. He didn't say that. What did he say? Go ahead and read. But I have prayed for thee. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not. That thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, uh -huh. strengthen thy brethren. So whose faith must maintain, be maintained? Yo. Right. Jesus can tell you what to do. But if you don't believe it, it won't help you. Faith is merely a belief, sisters and brothers. Man, it complicated that. So he said, I pray that your faith remains strong. Because if your faith remains strong, you're going to get eternal life. You will be saved. Because as long as you believe in the word of God, you're going to do what he say. And as long as you do what he say, he's going to love you. But today, that your faith fail, you got a problem. Let me give you an example. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Back up to the ninth chapter. Uh, I'm, uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, I'm sorry. Because you have to do, remember, whatever you being preached, you can't forget it. Otherwise, your faith is going to go down the toilet. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. These things the Lord put in here. So we will know this. That's why Paul says such the scripture. That's what the Lord wants you to do. That's why he said, Ecclesiastes, he said, a preacher sought out good word. He sought out the truth, the word of God. Because if you don't seek it out, then you don't know what God wants. You have to seek it out to find out what it is that's going to get you salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1. 15 and 1. Go ahead and read. Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Go ahead. Which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. He said, look, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached to you, which you have received, and wherein you stand. Didn't Moses say if you, if you know those that believe go walk in it? Yeah. You have to stand in it. Go ahead and read. By which also ye are saved. By which also you are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. If you keep in memory what I have preached to you, unless you believe for nothing. Right. I'm giving you the keys to salvation, the ingredients, but you got to remember it and you got to stand in it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, your belief would come to nothing. It's on you. Back up. 
Now to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. But we're going to show you what Paul is saying, sisters and brothers. People don't understand how grave this is. You just not, can't have a passive relationship with God. You've got to have a lifetime relationship with God. You've got to stand in it. You've got to walk in it. It's got to be a part of it. Because God is not one that you can stand on your lawyer. Well, Lord, you know I did this yesterday. I don't work like that. Let me show you. Let's start at verse 24. Verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 24. Go ahead and read. Know ye not? That they which run in a race run all, uh -huh. but one receiveth the prize. Go ahead. So run that ye may obtain. Now you have to run too. But yours is a little different than man's races. You race, you are running for immortality. So run. Go ahead and read. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. That means that you pay attention. You are trained. You are honed. You get everything right. You're tempered in all things. Go ahead and read. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Uh-huh. But we an incorruptible. But we're running for an incorruptible crown. Go ahead. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. He said, I'm running, but I know what I'm doing. I'm not out there and say, well, you know, maybe the Lord was this. Maybe the Lord said, uh-uh, no. You have to say, this is what the Lord said. I know what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. He said, look, I'm running. But I know what I'm doing. Go ahead and read. So fight I. Uh-huh. Not as one that beat up the air. And I'm fighting not as one that beat the air. I'm not shadow boxing. I know what I'm fighting for. Go ahead and read. But I keep under my body uh -huh. and bring it into subjection. But I have to keep this body under subjection. Go ahead and read. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, uh -huh. I myself should be a castaway. Lest by any means. Even though I have preached to thousands, which Paul had, has done, I myself become a castaway. Mm. Paul is letting you know that when you walk into this love of the Lord, you have to stay in it. You have to abide in it. Yeah. Because the day that you stop doing it, the same thing will happen to you that would have happened to the people in Egypt when the blood was over the doorpost. Mm -hmm. Moses said, stay inside your house. Don't come out. Because if you come out of the house, you have stepped from under the protection of the blood. Same thing now. You got to stay in the house, sister. By doing what thus said the Lord. He said, now, after I have preached to many, I myself, if I don't keep my body under subjection, in other words, if I start breaking laws, the God's laws, and his commandments, I will become a castaway. Because when he's going to bring into subjection, subjected to what? Uh, subjection to what? The law. That's what you have to be subject to. Let's go into St. John, the 14th chapter. Because you have to show the Lord that you deserve this great salvation that he's going to give you. Mm -hmm. You have to show that to him, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. You just cannot say, I love the Lord. I've confessed the name of Jesus and I'm saved. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody pay no attention to Jesus. See, this is the thing that gets me. Nobody pays attention to Jesus. Everybody loves him, but they don't pay. And he, and he speaks plain. He don't speak in riddles. Let me show you something real plain. St. John 14, and we're going to read verse 15. Can't be no plainer than this. 14 and 15. Go ahead and read. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Do I need to interpret that? That's a one line, ain't it? Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. Let's see how long. Let's go into St. John the 15th chapter now. Let's start at verse 1. 15 and 1. Go ahead and read. I am the true vine. Uh-huh. And my father is the husbandman. He's I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. He's the one that's going to groom this vine. Go ahead and read. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, uh -huh. he taketh away. Now this is the one that come into me and don't stay. Well, all, I'm saved now, you know. I don't have to do nothing else. You ain't bearing no fruit, he's going to take you away. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And every branch that beareth fruit. And every branch that beareth fruit, the one that get in and talking and living and walking in it. Go ahead and read. He purged of it. He purged you. He and had to get rid of all that leavening out of it. Go ahead and read. That it may bring forth more fruit. You have to put away what it purge. It's purging your sin, sister and brother. How do you do that? By you stop keep breaking the law. When you stop breaking, stop breaking the law, you have been purged. Now you're ready to bring forth more fruit. Go ahead and read. Now ye are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Oh, so what cleans you, sister and brother? Word. The word. You get some religion out there say all you got to do is do the word. You don't have to do the baptism. If you ain't cleaned by the word, you won't do the baptism. You walk around a dirty vessel saying that you ain't got to be baptized by water because you have been cleansed by the word. No, you ain't because you're breaking the law. Right. Even John the Baptist, when Jesus came to John the Baptist to get baptized, he said, look, I should be baptizing you. But he said, John, he told John, suffer it to be so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. You can't say I ain't going to steal and turn around and kill somebody. Well, you know, the Lord going to save me because I didn't kill, steal no, from nobody. Uh, let alone that kill, but I did steal. When you break one, you break them all. Right. You understand? So now, you are cleansed through the word which I have spoken unto you. Go ahead and read. Four. If you abide in me. If you abide in me. And I in you. Uh-huh. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Go ahead. except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Now what's going to happen to a flourishing plant? Would all say you got a, a peach tree full of peaches. Then you go and you break the, the branch off and throw it on the ground. What's going to happen to the fruit? Hey. The branch is going to die and the fruit is going to wither up. You know why? Because you are no longer in the tree. From which you get your substance. So the Lord said you have to abide in me. Just like a branch in the vine. You have to stay in me. And if you don't abide in me. You're going to dry up and die. Skip down to verse 9. And go ahead. As the Father have loved me, uh -huh. so have I loved you. As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Go ahead and read. Continue ye in my love. Continue you in my love. How do you continue in the Lord's word? Let the word tell you. Go ahead. If ye keep my commandments, uh -huh. ye shall abide in my love. Oh, so that's how, that's what the ingredient is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Go ahead and read. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Oh, so Jesus, the Father's love was unconditional for Jesus, was uh -huh. People always, I hear that foolish talk. Well, you know, the Lord loved me unconditionally. That's the greatest lie ever been told. Ain't no such thing as unconditional love. You can have a son or daughter. They're doing everything wrong. Always messing up, causing you problems. Don't do nothing you say. Every day they call you grief. Whatever love you got is going to go out of the window. And you find yourself saying, boy, I'll be glad when I can get rid of this terrible child so I can get some relief. Same thing with the Lord, sisters and brother. If you want to abide in the God's love and the Jesus' love, keep his commandments. Like Jesus wants to abide in the Father's love by keeping his commandments, sisters and brothers. What does abide mean? But what if you stop keeping the command? Then you can't abide in his love, can you? You know, that is simplicity, sisters and brothers. This is what this is all about. It's not about complication. It's about simplicity because God wants to make sure that you can save yourself so he gives you things that you can understand. Now let's go into 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, the second chapter. The Lord is letting you know all the ingredients of salvation, sisters and brothers, and all ingredients are simple. Do what I say. Can't beat that. First mm -hmm. John chapter 2, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 
St. John chapter 2 and verse 1. That's why I never could understand, sister and brother, how is that all these saved people don't have to keep God's law? You know why? Because they was taught by the Roman Christianity, sister and brother. But you are being taught now by Israelite Christianity. Them people, Israelite, you're Christian? I'll show you how dumb the world have gone, sister and brother. These books we read here, who wrote them? This is Israelite Christianity, not Roman. Two and one. Go ahead and read. This one, Israelite teach. Go ahead and read. My little children, uh huh. these things write I unto you. Go ahead. That ye sin not. That you sin not. Go ahead and read. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the now righteous. We, got, we have a judge advocate, somebody sitting right there with the Father, even Jesus. Give him a little more room, Father. Go ahead and read. And he is the propitiation for our sin. He's the sacrifice for our sin. He's the one that paid the veil. Go ahead and read. And not for ours only, uh -huh. but also for the sins of the whole world. Go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. How many people you heard tell me, I know the Lord, and they don't keep the commandments? Yeah, I know the Lord, because he's been with me all my life. I walk with him all my life, and then they put a pork shop in their mouth. He that said, I know him, go ahead and read. He that says, I know him, uh -huh. and keepeth not his commandments, go ahead. is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So speak John the Christian, the Israelite Christian. He that say, I know the Lord, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in it. That is the teaching of an Israelite Christian, yeah. not a Roman Christian. And these things, sisters and brothers, we would be... It would behoove us to understand that. Go ahead and read. But whoso keepeth his word, uh -huh. in him verily is the love of God perfected. Now if you keep his word, then the love of God is perfected in you. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Hereby know we that we are in him. Uh -huh. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Didn't the Lord, didn't Moses say, those that will keep the law will walk in him? Yeah. So if you're going to abide in the Lord, you're going to walk as he walked. And he kept the commandments. Mm -hmm. Jesus did he kept all the law when he was here. He is our captain of salvation. He is the forerunner. He said, watch me and do what I should do. But verse, we have verse 7. Go ahead and read. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, uh -uh. but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Then Moses said, I set before you this day yeah. life and death, good and evil, mm -hmm. choose life. Then that I set before you the commandment. Very old commandment. God is a fair God. He would not give one group of people one thing to do to get salvation, and then he give another group of people something else to do in a different generation. He don't work that. He is God. He don't have to change nothing. No. And he will not change himself. Skip down to verse 24. Verse 24. Okay, go ahead. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. Uh, what? Now let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. Go ahead and read. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So if that which you had from the beginning remain in you, abide in you, you will continue in the Son and in the Father. Because the Son didn't start with Mary's sister and brother. It was the Son that said in Genesis, the first chapter, let us, Make man in our image, not the Father. Go ahead and read. And this is the promise that he have promised us, uh -huh. even eternal life. So if you let that remain in you, which you have had from the beginning, 
then you will reap the promise that he promised us, eternal life. That's what it's all about, sisters and brothers. That's what it's all about. That's why, sisters and brothers, it scares me. If I should die and not keep in the command. Because this is one of the great big secrets that the world don't understand. God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of the living, not the dead. That covers everybody. If you live right, he's going to raise you from the dead. If you live wrong, he's going to raise you from the dead. And you will have a second death, but that looks like it's living to me when you're going to be weeping in national teeth. Because he had no intention to deal with death in the beginning, and he is not going to deal with it. If you mess around and end up the wrong side, you're going to end up with an ugly death, an ugly life. Well, you're going to be burnt with fire and worms going to be eaten on. And you're going to fill it all. Why? Because God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So, sisters and brothers, if you remember But the God have taught you, you will abide in it. And what he's taught you is what he taught Moses. Keep my commandments and you'll live. That's so simple. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. Because people have complicated this thing, sisters and brothers. This word is not complicated. All you have to do is read it and walk in it, like Moses said. You don't have to say, who's going to go to heaven and bring it down? Like Paul said, you don't have to go say, who's going to go to the deep and bring up Jesus from the grave? This word is in front of you. It's with you. The word of truth. What you have to do is deal with it and walk in it and get away from this foolish fleshly stuff. Yeah. Hebrews 10 and verse 35. 10 and 35. Hebrews 10 and 35. Okay, go ahead. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. So now you have confidence in this word and you're going to walk in your law. Don't let it nobody cast you to the ground. Walk in it. Go ahead and read. For ye have need of patience, uh -huh. that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. And this is what the saved people don't understand. Once you have done the right thing, now you have need of patience like you have done the work. So the clock ended your day at 4 o'clock. But payroll for payday time don't come to 6 o'clock. You have to sit there and wait for your money. Are you going to get mad? I ain't getting paid for two hours. I'm going to skip it. You can keep it. You're not going to do that, are you? You're going with patience to sit there and wait till he bring you that check. This is what the Lord is telling you. After you have done the will of God, you might, that you might have, uh, uh, you have need of patience that you have, might receive a promise. Go ahead and read. 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, so and will not tarry. Now, at the time appointed, he that's going to come will come. He ain't going to tarry. He's going to come on time. Go ahead and read. Now the just shall live by faith. Who's going to live by faith? The just. That's by your belief, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And neither is the Lord. Go ahead and read. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, uh -huh. but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We are not of them that draw back to destruction, no. but we are those that believe until the saving of the soul, because your soul is not saved now. Therefore, you have to have patience and keep believing, sisters and brothers. You cannot draw back. Because if you draw back, all your labor won't mean nothing. Let's go in Ezekiel 18 chapter and look at it. This is something that you have to do. This is a walk that you got to walk. 
You can't get tired. And start doing the wrong thing. You have to finish it. Because if you cross the line and you break the law, which Moses told you is the source of life, then you're going to get life, but it's going to be the wrong life. That's what, look, if the Lord is just going to kill me and that's it, I ain't going to feel nothing. Hey, I'll take a shot at it, but if I don't, no problem. I'm going to die and I just ain't going to wake up. Don't work like that. And we're going to understand that clearly. Ezekiel 18, and we're going to read verse 4. 18 and 4. Ezekiel 18 and verse 4. Ezekiel 18 and 4. Okay, read. Behold, all souls are mine. Uh huh. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. Uh huh. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. See, it was a saying in the old days the Father eats sour grapes and the children teach that on edge. In other words, the Father mess up and the children pay the bill. He said, Look, God said, I ain't going to be no more. All souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so are the soul of the Son, and the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20. And go ahead. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Go ahead and read. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Uh -huh. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Go ahead. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Uh -huh. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Uh -huh. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. He said, look, if you do right, your righteousness is going to stand for you. It's going to save you. Mm -hmm. But if the wickedness that are doing wicked, and he turns from committing all his wickedness, he shall live. He shall not die. Go ahead and read. All his transgressions that he have committed, uh -huh. they shall not be mentioned unto him. Uh -huh. In his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. So now when you stop doing wicked things, stop breaking God's laws and statutes and start keeping them and walking in them, the Lord said he won't even mention your wickedness. I don't care what it is. That's what I like about this God. Yeah. He will forget every wicked thing. It didn't say, he didn't pick a ch uh, cherry pick wickedness. He said wickedness did. Yeah. I won't even mention it to you. But then there's another side to this cone. Go ahead and read. 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? No. Go ahead and read. Saith the Lord God. Uh-huh. And not that he should return from his ways and live. He said, I ain't got no pleasure in the wicked dying. I want him to return and live. Go ahead and read. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness uh -huh. and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, Shall he live? Shall he live? Big question. Go ahead and read. All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned. All of his, when you start doing wicked, the Lord ain't going to mention your righteousness. Because mm. you're somewhere else now. You're not where you used to be. Like I said earlier, you can't live on your law system, bro. Uh. When you stop doing righteous, he ain't going to mention them. Go ahead and read. In his trespass that he have trespassed, and in his sin that he have sinned, uh -huh. in them shall he die. Go ahead. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Uh -huh. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal and not your ways unequal? And that's what people, that's what people, that's what people say all the time. Once I've been saved, I can't get cut off. They're saying that the Lord's way is not equal. Right. But the Lord's not yours. My way is equal. He have a standard that you cannot mess up. As long as you do right, it's going to be right. But if you do wickedness, for how long? Keep on read. 26. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness uh -huh. and committeth iniquity Go ahead. and dieth in them. If a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and you sin until you die. That's why and die in them. Go ahead and read. For his iniquity that he have done shall he die. What death is that talking about, sister and brother? Eternal death, yeah. which is a living death in the lake of fire. Hmm. See, as long if you're doing right and you die in your righteousness, you shall live forever on the good side of the kingdom. 
But if you turn from righteousness and start doing wicked things, you're still going to live forever on the bad side of the kingdom. Yeah. Because God said he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Remember when Jesus did that little show, that little uh, uh, thing, uh, what he was talking about, Lazarus and the rich man? Mm. He was talking about something that's going to happen beyond the white throne judgment after it's suspended. Yeah. You notice that Lazarus was communicating with Abraham? Mm. Them and the fire can talk to you, you can talk to them, but you can't come from where you are, and they can't come from where they are. And he said he was tormented in this place. Didn't he say that? Oh, yeah. That don't look like, like death like what we know death. That, when I saw that, that made me understand that there's more to death than man can comprehend. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you have to read what thus said the Lord to understand it. So now, if a man turned from wickedness, turned to wickedness, after he had lived right, the Lord said he ain't going to remember his wickedness. His righteous sisters and brothers. In other words, don't tell me what you did yesterday. I'm looking at what you are doing today. Thank you, Father, for drawing me. I couldn't have come unless. with me.